America now browses with browsers, window shopping with windows. Web watchers say more merchandise is available in cyber shops than ever before. A lot of major retailers are coming to the web in a big way. It's a story that almost doesn't need an introduction. The explosive growth of online shopping and the death of brick and mortar stores. America's vibrant consumerism of yesterday went digital. The internet's biggest draw, convenience. And so in 2019, when more than 9,300 retail stores closed, many feared that a retail apocalypse was in full swing. Some experts call it a retail apocalypse. 2019 marked one of the worst years in a decade for brick and mortar stores. Those store closures marked a nearly 60% uptick from the previous year. Concerning? Yes. But if you look a little closer, you'll see a few names that dominate the list. Payless alone accounted for about a quarter of the closures after it filed for bankruptcy. Other bankrupt retailers like Sears, Fred's, Jim Bury, and Charlotte Russe also fill the list. There's a certain amount of mismanagement going on that's caused the so-called retail apocalypse, oftentimes because of a leverage, leverage buyout, you know, some kind of private equity situation that saddled them with a lot of debt. The important thing is that the pie is growing. Retail sales are increasing. The reality of the matter is that almost 90% of retail sales occur in a store. The problem with the retail apocalypse narrative is it assumes online shopping is bad for brick and mortar stores. As online shopping grows, in-store shrinks. In reality, the two can be complementary. While it used to be that customers' entire shopping experience happened in-store, today it's more of a hybrid, in-store and online. For example, roughly two-thirds of consumers say they've researched a product online before shopping for it in-store. The flip side is also true. These are online retailers. When they open a physical store, the online sales also increase. So the physical store acts as marketing for the website. Consumers are also taking advantage of other hybrid options, like ordering online and then picking up in store. When given the option, more than 70% of consumers say they've tried in-store pickup. For companies like Target, that type of same-day pickup and delivery alone drove 80% of the company's growth in the third quarter of 2019. It's actually getting difficult to even measure what is an online sale versus what is an in-store sale. Yeah, I think we're actually going to get to the point where we have to get away from this notion that there are even two separate things. It's not just the Targets and Walmarts of retail that are taking advantage of brick and mortar stores. Once online only companies like Warby Parker, Everlane, Casper, Allbirds, Zappos, and even Amazon have seen the advantage of opening physical stores. There are now 1,700 stores that have been opened by these digitally native brands. Many of them said, you know, we're never going to open stores. We just want to sell online. And now they are. They're opening stores because it's the cheapest and easiest way for them to acquire new customers and increase their market share. As consumers, we still want to touch and try stuff on in store before buying it, get an item fast without paying for shipping, and expedite returns. Conveniences we can't get online. So we have this idea that everything's shifting online, and to a certain extent, it is. But the physical stores are still vastly important. And you're seeing a fundamental change you know, in the role of the store. Uh, it's happening slowly, but the store isn't just about transactions anymore. It's about creating customer engagement and brand building and, and fulfillment. You know, this, the store of tomorrow is going to look and feel a lot different than the store of yesterday. So maybe the term apocalypse is getting thrown around a bit too much. A better term? Evolution. As our shopping habits evolve, brick and mortar stores may just be as important as ever.